In this video, I'm going to explain exposure and brightness in Capture One Pro. I'll also show a few examples on how to use them together. Now, I've had some correspondence from people who seem a little confused between exposure and brightness in Capture One Pro. With these examples, I hope to give some clarification and a little guidance on how to use them. Here we have a scene which is obviously underexposed. We can see in our histogram here that we have no lighter colours. So naturally, the first thing you'd do to lighten the scene would be to bring up the exposure. OK, so I'll bring it up, up until I think it's at the right level. Great, now our flowers are nice and light and looking beautiful. But I think the rest of the scene, the greens and the mid-tones, could do with being a bit lighter. They're looking a bit dull and just don't pop at all. Now, if I do this with the exposure slider, what will happen is, it will bring up the mid-tones, but it will make the flowers far too light. The reason this happens is because when you increase the exposure slider, it stretches the whole of the tone curve. It lightens all of the colours across the tonal range, from the very dark colours right up to the whites. And then just before the highlights clip and go out of range, it bunches them up. And this stops them from completely clipping. But if you go too far with the highlight slider, then you end up with all of the lighter colours all really, really bright. Now, the way we get over this is to use the brightness slider. First of all, you have to set your exposure properly. Let's bring our exposure back down. Then bring the exposure back up, and I like to bring mine back up to the point where it's just starting to clip, where the brights would just blow out. There we go. As you can see, my exposure now is just starting to clip here. It's just at the point. So the very light parts of the flowers are just about where I'd like them to be. And then I'll go in and use my brightness slider. Now, what the brightness slider does is it increases the mid-tone, whilst at the same time increasing the shadows and the highlights a lot less. It increases the exposure, but using a mid-tone curve. And the effect it has is to brighten everything. Let's just bring it up. But as you can see, it's not crunching the highlights so much because it's not affecting them so much. It's mostly affecting the mid-tones. Now we've increased the mid-tones in our image, or increased the brightness, without affecting the highlights so much. We haven't overly affected the brightness of these flowers. So, to recap, the exposure will brighten the whole tonal range, but if you take it too far, it will blow out the lightest colours. As you can see here, the flowers are effectively blown out. Whereas the brightness, let's just bring this back down, whereas the brightness control will lighten or brighten, and as it has less effect on the highlights, it will be much less likely to blow the highlights out. Now, you may think, I know, let's just use the brightness control by itself. But because the brightness control mainly affects the mid-tones, it may not actually reach. It may not be able to brighten the highlights to your satisfaction. That's why we use both. That's why we use a mixture of the exposure, which we first set to the required amount, which in this case, in this image, I just want the flowers nicely lit. Then I'll bring up the brightness, which will brighten the image by bringing up the mid-tones without blowing out the flowers. And if I think the highlights are a little overblown, then I can bring down the exposure just a tad, and then bring up the brightness a little bit more. And that's the difference between exposure and brightness. Exposure will affect the whole tone curve, lightening the whole image, whilst brightness will affect mainly the mid-tones. And that is how we use them together. OK, here's another example of using the exposure and the brightness together. In this example, as we can see from the histogram 
and the image, we have blown out highlights. There are various parts of this image which are completely blown out. One thing we could do to get rid of these blown out areas is to reduce the exposure. As we reduce the exposure, the blown out areas begin to come into range. And I just keep bringing it down until effectively we have nothing blown out. I think we're about there. Sky's not blown out. We're just about there now. Okay, now these areas are not blown out, like so. But I'd like the overall image to be a little lighter. I'll just retrieve these highlights a tad more. There we go, it's all definitely not blown out now. But I think the mid-tones are a little dark for this image. I'd like to lighten it up a bit. So all I have to do is use the brightness to increase the mid-tones. And shadows a bit, so bring up the brightness until we get a nice bright image. And now we can see that the sky and the box and the knives and the edge of the barbecue here are not blown out anymore because we reduce the brightness of everything in the scene, every tone with the exposure slider. And then we increased our mid-tones with the brightness slider to brighten up the image without blowing out the highlights. We rescued a blown out image with exposure and brightness and set its overall tone. In this example, I'll show you how you can use the exposure and the brightness sliders to add drama to a scene. What I'd like to do is to bring down the midtones and shadows in the clouds to make the clouds pop a little more, make them stand out, add a bit of drama. If we try to bring down the brightness using the exposure slider, like so, then it just does not have the required effect. The exposure slider crushes the whole curve and effectively makes everything above the shadows dark. All the tones are now crushed down into the shadow area like so. So let's just reset that and try the same thing with the brightness slider. As I bring down the brightness slider, you can see the effect. Here we go. That is working very well. It's affected the midtones and the shadows a lot more, mostly the midtones and some shadows, and brought down all of the midtone colours. So making them darker against the lighter colours in the clouds. The lighter colours have remained much less affected. Now, if I'd like to just lighten the clouds a little bit more, then I can increase the exposure just a tad like so. That brings up everything, so darken the midtones and shadows again with the brightness control. And now we have nice, bright, dramatic clouds against the darker blues and reds and pinks in the sky. Let's just take a look at the effect. So before, a nice picture, and after, and just with the exposure and brightness, we've created a really dramatic sky. Pretty cool. And one final example. I'd like to make this scene here more light and airy. A nice light airy base for the remainder of the edit. First, let's go to the exposure and bring it up to see the effect. It's lightened everything, but as you can see, bits of the image are getting blown out, even the fence is getting blown out. And that's not what I want at all. So let's have a look at using the brightness control. Here we go. As you can see, as I'm raising the brightness, it's not blowing out the highlights in the scene anywhere near as much. We're getting a nice light scene. The extreme highlights are just heading towards being blown out, so I'll bring down the exposure just a tad until nothing looks blown out. And there we go, we have a nice light airy base for an edit. It's really nice and clean. If we have a quick look at before and after, before and after, we have a nice light and airy scene with no blown out parts.
because we use the brightness to lighten the scene which affects mainly the mid-tones, a little on the shadows and highlights, but stops the blowout. Then we reduce the exposure just a little bit because that affects the whole curve and retrieves our highlights a tad. And so that's how to use exposure and brightness. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to try Capture One or buy Capture One, then please see the links in the video description. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content, then please subscribe.